right, everyone, back, brand new Cabral Concept. Today's episode 3007. If you want to check out all the research, all the show notes, and the three big takeaways, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 3007. So let's get right into it. What I want to share with you here today are specifically how omega-6s are leading to faster aging and more disease in the body. And I personally believe, I know that we demonize sugar, and rightly so, rightly so no doubt about about it when we consume more and more processed sugar that can be detrimental to our cells it can increase free radical damage increase oxidative stress we can age faster can lead to greater amount of um, type 2 diabetes heart disease uh, potentially cancer and much more so no doubt about it i don't think processed sugar is a good thing either i would not categorize things like sweet potatoes fruits and other types of starches in that and like by in no way shape or form what i and there's no research showing at all that those lead to type 2 diabetes cancer or anything else on the contrary it shows that they're actually more protective but that's uh, another show i've done many shows on that and i'm happy to link those up at episode 3007 here today what i do want to talk about and something that i believe is as detrimental as processed sugar but most likely far more inflammatory. And I've said this in the past, so this isn't something new that I'm stating here today. I believe that processed oils are most likely the worst thing that humans can come into contact with, like without a doubt. And they are typically coming from any imaginable fried food. And you could say, well, this is a healthy fried food. There are really no healthy fried foods. There, there honestly aren't. Because what happens is, even though some oils are more protective than others, the oil becomes oxidized. And it increases something And a lot of people say, well, what's, what's it leading to? Two main things I want to talk about here today. And then I'm going to go through all the different, um, there's essentially six mechanisms. I just want to share it with you, those six mechanisms. So omega-6s are a type of essential fat. They're, they're a fatty acid. We need to get them. The body's not going to produce them on their own. So it's not like we don't need omega-6s. We do. The problem is when we take in a lot of seed oils and the, I mean, let's be honest, most of them are soy oil right? It's been completely hydrogenated, oxidized. There's no good soy oil. There isn't. You can call it organic soy oil. Doesn't matter. It's not healthy for you. And this, the other one is corn oil. Corn and soy are essentially, they're ubiquitous in all processed foods. So that's why when we talk about processed foods are bad for us, why are we saying that? Oh, it's the artificial color. Oh, it's the artificial flavoring. Okay. Yeah, maybe like those are not good for you at all, but as detrimental in potentially the most detrimental are the oxidizing effect of these processed oils, mainly coming from soy and corn. There are others as well, seed oils that are not good. However, those are the two that we're going to see the most. They're both typically coming from a genetically modified organism. So GMO soy, GMO corn. Why? Well, farmers don't even make money creating these products, growing these products, these foods. They're not really foods, but they're, they're products, right? They've been genetically modified and they're now called an organism that's been modified. Well, they get subsidized by the government to do this. And then those two ingredients get put in chips and candy bars and ice cream and everything almost imaginable. And they use it as a, a thickener and an agent to hold things together, to whip them together, to make them a little bit fluffier at times and give them a specific consistency. They're also extremely cheap. And so they get added to these products. The problem is this, we've got two, two parts to this. The first one is from alpha linoleic acid. And why, why is this important? I think that this is important to look at it because this can be more oxidized. It is absolutely possible. And the other part is more from the arachidonic acid. They can lead to two different, and I'm not going to get too sciencey on you, on you today here, but what I want to share with you is that they can create two main factors in the body. One is called uh, nuclear factor kappa beta, NFKB. It's important one to know because it's essentially a transcription factor that promotes inflammation in the body when we consume it, okay? So when we're assuming these higher up levels of omega-6s from seed-based oils or I'm going to talk about now prostaglandins, leukotrienes, thromboxanes from 
omega-6 is coming from arachidonic acid. So when people say that there's no upper limit to arachidonic acid that you can consume from meat or from coconut oil or whatever, there is, right? It's somewhat dependent on the individual, but those things as well, especially as we get older, can create more prostaglandin series two, and as I said, other factors called leukotrienes, and uh, they're inflammatory cytokines. They create inflammation in our body. So we can get them from plant foods, don't let people say you can, and we can get them from meat. What we don't want to do is go overboard on those specific seed oils or go overboard on the higher fat, higher arachidonic acid meats. And I podcast on those as well. I'll link them up at episode 3007 today. So just wanted to give you a very unbiased look at that. And now I want to share with you how it causes ages in the body. And then what we can do in order to balance that out, because we know that we need some omega-6s. Now, we don't need omega-6s from corn oil or soy oil, that's for sure. But we can get some omega-6s from uh, eggs and meat and other products of that, of that variety. Okay, so I've got six points I want to share with you right now. Omega-6s convert very easily into pro-inflammatory substances in the body that I just spoke about. They've been correlated directly to chronic inflammation, and that chronic inflammation then can lead to various disease outcomes. And think of all the major causes of mortality, right, which there are really only four to five. So cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure stroke, type 2 diabetes, cancer, and Alzheimer's. Okay, well, omega-6s increases the likelihood of all of those five. Right, So beyond all the other issues that they can cause in the body, the joint pain, the arthritis, uh, autoimmune, et cetera, you've got five big reasons not to do that. Right, Those are all the five causes of mortality. The next one is this. It's impaired cell signaling. So I've spoken about this before, and I don't know the last time I actually talked about this, but it's an important one. Essentially, uh, our cells are, are a bilipid uh, layer or bilipid membrane. So that means they have two layers of fat or it's just two layers of uh, what I like to call hard fats and soft fats. If you have too many hard fats, let's call those omega-6s, and not enough soft fats, let's call those omega-3s, you have a difficult time getting nutrients in and waste out. That's the best way to think about it. So the other difficulty is you're saying, okay, how do you unlock the door to getting glucose into the cell? That's why just, just eating Sugar alone, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's unlikely that you can cause type 2 diabetes that way. But you can absolutely, and I'm talking about from healthy foods, uh, but you can absolutely cause it by eating fried foods. Believe it or not, you can. Because you disrupt the cell's ability to allow insulin to unlock the cell door to shuttle glucose out of the bloodstream. And if the glucose hangs around in the bloodstream long enough, the pancreas keeps producing insulin, keeps producing insulin, and then no longer or to a lesser degree produces insulin to get the glucose into the cell. And now you have type 2 diabetes with elevated blood sugar levels, right? So it's important to look at that. Omega-6s can gum up the cell membrane and can block a lot of these cell signals. Extremely important, especially for DNA replication and aging. All right, the next one is oxidative stress. Probably one of the number one reasons why we age. And so, you know, as you get to that like mid 30s to mid 40s, some people get a little bit more time out of it, but there's like this 10 year window where all of a sudden, like all of a sudden, it seems like you start to age now. Like before you didn't feel like you were aging, you didn't see as many signs of aging. Now all of a sudden, more gray hair, more wrinkles, thinner skin poor recovery from workouts, et cetera, et cetera. Well, your body now, the, that rain barrel overflowed, right? Now your body's no longer able to squelch the oxidative stress coming from free radical damage as easily. As you're younger, you have more enzymes, better protein buffering, et cetera. As you get older, not as great. Less sleep, more stress, you know, et cetera, et cetera. More miles on the machine. So the issue is, what can we do then to lower oxidative stress. That's always what I'm thinking about. That's all literally like a big part of it. And taking tons of exogenous um, outside of you, antioxidants is not necessarily the way to go. Some, yes, like daily fruit and vegetable blend, all natural greens, full spectrum vitamin C, yes, 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 all that's great. But really what we wanna look at is what are we doing to cause the oxidative stress in the first place? And then get your brightly colored fruits and vegetables every day. 
seven to nine servings. Those are powerful antioxidants, good quality olive oil, uh, specific type of water that I've been using now over the past well, a couple months that I want to be able to share that with you in, in another week or two. That is one of the only high antioxidant waters that I know. And if we're drinking water all day long and we're using it in tea and coffee, it's a great all natural thing to be able to do. And, and uh, I can tell you that there is a lot of research behind this. And so as we get older, these things become more important. When we're younger, not as important, right? Like it's like, when I was uh, 25 years old, 27 years old, giving this uh, exercise, now, now I had Addison's disease, a lot of other issues, but um, you give advice when you're younger to people that are twice your age, but you don't yet have the miles on your own body to even understand what oxidative stress is doing to the body and how you're not recovering as quickly. So we'll talk about how to balance that in just a moment, but omega-6s, the more omega-6s you take in that are unbalanced, the faster your body ages, the faster the oxidative stress, and what's called, what's created is called reactive oxygen species, okay? So really, really important. The next one, number one cause of death still, cardiovascular health. The more omega-6s that we take in unchecked, the larger amount of inflammation begins to accumulate in the arteries. As inflammation accumulates in the arteries, the body says, oh, we've got microscopic tears in the endothelial tissue. We need to repair these tears. We're going to make and produce and bring in more cholesterol. We might use some of that calcium floating around the arteries to help patch up these areas as well. Now do we get cholesterol building up in the arteries, right? Plaque, we get hardening of the arteries, stiffness, stenosis, right? So these are all of the issues that come with aging, but they don't have to. And higher amounts of mega-6s only speed up that process to a greater degree. The last one I want to share with you here today is the disruption of the body's ability to balance inflammation based on too high a level of omega-6s taken in and not enough omega-3s. So the body can get omega-6s almost everywhere, like literally everywhere. Nuts, right? Easy. Seeds, not saying they're bad, but I'm just saying more omega-6s than omega-3s. And in even the higher omega-3 ones, like let's think about well, macadamia nuts, great monounsaturated fat, even a walnuts, right? We always like, oh, walnuts are high in omega-3s. Sure, but they're super high in omega-6s as well, right? So it's like, yes, we can get those from nature and that's great. No doubt about it. And I'm not saying nuts and seeds, that those things are bad for you. We can get good omega-3s from grass-fed meat or pastured eggs or pastured chicken or whatever it might be. Oh, God, I understand that, but, and I've talked to, I've reached out to a bunch of companies. No company can show me, because it's not natural in nature, to have a better ratio than a three to one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3s. And that's natural. So again, omega-6s, three to omega-3s, one, totally fine. Like that's a great ratio. Nothing wrong with that at all. But you're not going to find meat with a higher omega-3 than omega-6 ratio. I haven't seen it yet. But again, if I'm somehow missing it, please leave a comment below, send a link to the company, but not just to the company, send a link to the research that has been done showing us, proving to us that there is this, because it's not. So where do you then get these extra omega-3s? You get them from fish. That, that's where you mainly get it from. A little bit from chia seeds, a little bit from flax, a little bit from seaweed. Uh, those are the main things that are realistically, there's a few other things, but realistically, those are the main things that you can consume. The seaweed, the because uh, you can get nori snacks like the seaweed snacks. There's, there's some omega threes, not a lot. I'm not gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest with you, not a lot. Um, the conversion from flax to omega threes, uh, sorry, from um, ALA and flax to EPA and DHA is okay. It's about 14 percent or so. It's not bad. Um, chia seeds is around six percent to maybe eight percent, so not bad. Good to have. Uh, pretty good for the body as well as long as it's not oxidized. And then there's fish. So that's the reason why most of the books that you read on uh, cancer or you read on aging or you read on the Mediterranean diet, you really want to get fish uh, or omega-3 supplementation into your body four times a week. So it doesn't have to be a ton. You're not talking about eating a pound of fish you know, per sitting, but you are around six ounces to eight ounces or so of trout, of wild salmon, wild trout, wild salmon, mackerel, sardines, anchovy. Those are the top ones I recommend. Those are the five I recommend. Now, there are others. Tunas are high in uh, omega-3s, but it can also be high in mercury. So tuna is one of the fish that you maybe once a month, maybe twice, run your minerals and metals test to see if you have high levels of mercury first. That's important to do. Um, and then also, 
once you find a lifestyle that really works for you and, and that, you're, that you like that you can maintain, run an inflammation test. I'll link it up for you here today at, at stephencabal.com slash 3007. Run a test. Just find out your omega-6 to omega-3 levels. A lot of people believe they're at a healthy level, but you don't want to wait until it's too late. A simple at-home lab test, finger prick, drop a blood on the card, send it in. Within two to three weeks, you get your levels. That's it. Like It's that easy. And if you say, I don't want to eat fish five times a week to get my levels up, okay, then don't. Eat fish if you want or not. Don't eat fish. That, that's up to you if you can't get good, clean, healthy fish, which most people can because you can get the smaller fish. Um, and then just use an omega-3, daily omega-3 um, support supplement instead. Don't overdose on omega-3s. Find a brand that's not oxidized. Find a brand that's triglyceride bound. Find a brand that's heavy metal free. The uh, company that I formulate for, Equalife, you get two grams a day. It's a two and a half uh, ratio, two and a half to one ratio of EPA to DHA, which clinically means you're going to then be able to raise your levels to a three to one ratio of omega sixes to omega threes. So it's an easy way, two soft shells a day, or the liquid is just one teaspoon a day, that's it. So we use it for my daughters, obviously at a much smaller dosage. I use it for myself, my wife every day. And I've tried a bunch of different brands. I've tried uh, vegan based varieties. It just takes so many in order to be able to get it. So I understand if you are vegan, it's just more challenging and you just have to do your best. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but many people, will use a good daily omega-3 even if they're eating fish a couple times a week. And you just have to do what works best for you, what you feel is best for you. Here's what I found. I eat fish typically two to three times a week. That, that's what I eat. That's the amount of fish that I eat. Um, maybe more, like maybe one more time a week, but typically never more than that. All I do is I just take the same amount of omega-3 every day, and when I eat fish, it's a bonus. That's, that's kind of how I look at it. And that's what we do in my family. Very simple, very straightforward, easy to do. I always want you to find what's best for you. And the nice thing is with at-home lab testing, there's no more guessing. You can just say, oh, this works for me. This works for my body. I don't have to guess to say this is the right diet for me. And also, if you're someone on a higher protein diet, remember, you're taking in more omega-6s. And over time, that will create and can create more inflammation. And I'm, I'm just going by, again, unbiased scientific research. So just... Balance that with more omega-3s. Taking a little bit more fish if you're on a higher protein diet rather than just all meat and all eggs all the time. Or balance it with, instead of taking two omega daily omega-3 soft gels, take three. Like that's, you know, again, you don't have to go overboard. I'm not talking about taking six. <laughs> I'm talking about taking one extra, another gram extra to help balance all the omega-6s you're taking in. So this is what we do. Again, in our practice, it's all about personalized health. That's what it's all about. Finding the right level for you. Ideally, you run the big five labs. You'll find out exactly the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients that your body needs. But if you just want to find out omega-6s to omega-3s, that's the inflammation test. Um, you can find it over at stephencabral.com or more specifically, I'm going to give you the link here today. stephencabral.com slash 3007. Check it out. As always, if this was helpful, do feel free to pass this show along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. I'll talk with you tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.